my name is Ed Frawley. This video is going to explain the features uh, and how to program most of the functions on the Educator Pro 900 remote collar. Before we begin, uh, I must say that this is not a collar that I or the people that work for me would recommend to a new dog trainer. It is the most feature rich remote collar on the market, but it's also the most complicated collar on the market to figure out how it works. And that's the reason I'm producing this videotape. This remote collar is designed for professional dog trainers. It is the most expensive remote collar on the market. It is not a remote collar that a new dog trainer should use not even if you want to become a professional dog trainer down the road. I'm going to start by assuming you've got it in hand, and the first thing you're going to do is you're going to open up your box and take a look at all the things that come with it. So I'm going to tell you what's in it. Uh, if you open up your box and some of these things aren't there, first thing you've got to do is call Learbird. We have excellent customer service. We want to make sure you're happy. So you've got your manual. Um, the owner of the Educator Collar Company Greg is a great guy. I love him. He is a, in, he's a genius uh, engineer. He's the guy that designs and puts these collars together. The mistake that Greg makes is he writes his own user manuals, and they suck. Greg, they suck. I can't figure it out. I have to call your office a million times to try and figure out how to work this thing. Have somebody else do your manuals for you. So anyway, take this thing and throw it in the garbage. You're going to have a receiver in your collar. Here's your receiver that goes on the dog's neck. You're going to have a transmitter in the collar, in the box, I'm sorry. Uh, you're going to have a charger. I have them all unwound. They don't come, they don't come all tangled up like this. But you're going to have a charger with two cables. One of the cables plugs into the transmitter in the back, or pardon me, the receiver in the back, and the other one is a mini USB connector, and that one charges the transmitter. So you've got a, a plug with two cables. You're going to want to keep that. A slick feature that comes with the Pro Educator is a USB stick. This has a computer program that will allow you, and we'll cover it later in this video, that will allow you to program some of the features on your transmitter. I'm not going to go into that right now, but you're going to want to for sure have this. Uh, you're going to have a little strap that can connect to the back of your transmitter. There are longer contact points. The contact points make contact with your dog's neck. They come with the shorter contact points. You're given longer contact points in a little Ziploc bag. If you have a long-haired dog, you'll probably want to put the longer contact points on. It comes with a little black wrench to take your contact points. They just screw off. I won't take this off, but it was that easy to turn it. Make sure they're on tight when you put it back on, but you're going to want your wrench. It comes with a little belt clip that screws on the back of your transmitter. My advice to this, put it with the manual because it's an excellent way to lose your transmitter. And no one will be madder than you at yourself if you start using that belt clip and you get home and this baby's missing because you're going to have to buy another one. Don't even use it. Use this little strap or just keep it in your hand or your pocket. It is also, the last thing in the box is going to be this little light. It comes in a Ziploc bag. And what that does is allows you to test your stimulation. If you're one of those chickens, that's afraid to put the collar on yourself to see if it's working, you can use this little light when it's on and you push the button, 
this will light up. When I get into the next segment on this video on how to turn the system on, I'm going to show you another way to see that you might not ever have to use this. It's your call. So that's what comes when you open up the box. Just make sure you have all these things there. Then you're ready to go on and start to learn how to use it. Now we're going to talk about how to turn your collar on once you get it. And I do say and should say that when you get this out of the box, the first thing you should do is plug them both in, plug them into the wall, let them stay plugged in for at least 12 hours. I know it's, you want to get going, you want to learn how to do it, yada, 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 but take the time to do it right. So plug it in, charge it fully. Uh, let's assume now they've been plugged in for 12 hours, you come out and you're going to turn your collar on. Your transmitter needs to be turned on. There's an on and off button. When you're looking at it, on the right hand side, right here, there's two buttons. One has a P, that's your program button. The other has an on and off button. So to turn the transmitter on, you simply push the button, the blue light comes on, so you know your transmitter is working. The blue light is on for a number of seconds and then it'll turn itself off. Anytime you, once it turns itself off like you just saw there, if you want to see what was on it, just push any button and the blue light comes back on. Now, we want to turn on our receiver. The receiver has been plugged in and it has, the receiver has a little red magnetic dot on the back right here and the transmitter has a red dot on the back. They're raised dots. This one is sunken in a little bit, this one's raised. To turn it on you just take this red dot and touch it to that red dot like this, and it goes on. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> that can't happen. Anyway, that doesn't ever happen. But the receiver is on, and you can see that it's on because it's blinking green. Now, at the end of the day, when you're done training, you take your transmitter, put it on the receiver, and if you see it, it's going to turn red. See, it turned red there. That way, you know it's off. If you're not sure it's off, just strap this baby to your neck. Turn it up to 100 and push the button. Thought I was going to do it too, didn't you? <laughs> I'm not that dumb. Okay, that's how you turn it on. That's how you turn it off. So let's just take a second and talk about keeping your units charged. Back when I was on the Sheriff's Department from a million years ago, 1990 to 2000, as a canine handler, every single time I took my patrol dog out, I put the remote collar on him, every time. And maybe one in 20 or 30 times did I ever had, have to actually use the transmitter, but it was on him all the time. When I came home, I take the collar off the dog and I plug it into the charger for two reasons. You can plug this thing in all the time. They have built-in switches. When it gets fully charged, it turns itself off. That's the important thing. You always want to know, if you're going to use a remote collar, you always want to know that it's charged. Uh, a little story for me, just a couple weeks ago, my cousin Keith out in South Dakota, I was out fishing with him, and he has a new golden retriever, he's a hunter, so he's teaching his young dog, who's, this will be the dog's first hunting season, he's teaching the, the dog with the collar, and he wanted me to go out and give him some advice on how to use the collar. Well, his collar wasn't charged, we were out in the field for about five seconds and a deer jumped up, and as his dog disappeared over the horizon, he's sitting there calling him, trying to charge it, or trying to stimulate him. His collar wasn't charged. So if you just remember, when you're not using this baby, have one place in your house where it's always charging. In our home, Cindy uses the remote collar on her dogs. They're right at her feeding station downstairs in the basement. That's what you do. You plug it in when you're not using it, 
put it in the same place. You'll not lose it because you know when you need it, it's over there by the feeding station and it's plugged in. So in the next 30 seconds, I just want to talk about the number of seconds because there's different times that the collar will stimulate your dog depending upon how you have the program set. It comes from the box with the S3 set for momentary. Momentary means it's just an instantaneous plap. It's just like giving your dog a pop on the leash. That's what momentary is. Continuous is that it will continually, continually stimulate your dog if you hold the button down for 10 seconds. At the end of 10 seconds, it turns itself off, okay? Momentary is a pop. Holding the continuous down will stimulate for 10 seconds. The instantaneous, should you choose to use the instantaneous method, will you turn it on, you start from zero. To use instantaneous, you have to start from zero. You turn it on and it's gonna stay on for 45 seconds or until you turn it off. That's very important to understand on the instantaneous. 45 seconds is how long it can be on there. And we'll talk more just in the chapter on instantaneous. The other two times are if you use the ramp button, if you program one of them, one of these four buttons to be the ramp button, it will go from zero to whatever your working level is in one second. And then it'll stay on for 10 seconds. So before we start to get into uh, the explanation of the features and how to program this remote collar, I want to add a disclaimer here. There are so many, a ton of different ways that you can program this remote collar. Just because I'm explaining how to use the collar doesn't mean that I'm promoting somebody to use a boost feature or that I'm promoting somebody to use a 45 second uh, instantaneous feature. I'm going to explain what the features are in here. It's going to be up to you uh, and your trainer or you figuring out what you want to do with your specific dog. Just because I cover the feature doesn't mean that I will ever use that feature on my dog. I think it's important that you understand that. The transmitter has four stimulation buttons. They call them S buttons. There's S1 here, S2 here, S3 here. The red button on the front is S4. The other two buttons on the system are the program button on the top, on the top right, the on and off button. Really all the buttons you're gonna to have to worry about. And then you have a dial that you can turn your collar from zero all the way up to 100. And when it's at 100, it says high. So that's what's on the transmitter, it's very simple. S1, S2, S3, S4. Those four buttons can be programmed in a million different ways that we're going to talk about in a few minutes. Your program button has a P on it, remember that. The on and off button is just below it, how you turn your transmitter on and off. The on and off button is going to be used later on in the programming. We're going to cover it in detail. So that's what we got. Now I'm going to talk about when you first turn it on, you're going to see a number of things happen in this little blue circle and the circle is blue when you push one of the buttons. I'm gonna just identify what's on there, and then as we go through the video, you're gonna learn exactly what each one of these little, or each one of these little uh, letters means inside this blue circle. So now in this segment, we're gonna talk about what you see on the display, or what you could see on the display, depending upon where you are in your programming modes. It starts with, on the top left-hand side, momentary stimulation. Next to that is a plus, which means momentary boost stimulation. Next to that is continuous stimulation, then continue, the plus means continu continuous boost stimulation. And then you'll notice that the blue light 
only stays on for a few seconds. That's to conserve your battery power. Push any of the buttons and it gets light again. The next is the R for ramp. Uh, then there's an R plus for ramp boost. Then we have an instantaneous stimulation. We have a V for vibration, a T for tone. The, uh, we have a one flashing right out of the box. You're going to see a one flashing. That means it's programmed for one dog. This unit can be programmed for three dogs. So you could have three if you choose to buy additional receivers. You can program it so you'll have two dogs or three dogs. Right out of the box, there's a one that's flashing there. That means it's programmed to one dog. If we had two dogs, you'd have a one and a two. If we had three, we would have a one, two, and three, right above the levels of stimulation. Underneath the levels of stimulation, you have a bar with four pieces. That's the charge level that's on your transmitter, okay? There are other symbols that you can see on this dial if you're, vi if you're, you're programming, but they're not on there all the time. Right out of the box, those are the things you're gonna see. But you can also have, you can have a, a night tracking light on your receiver for your dog, and that'll be displayed on the dial. You can have uh, a symbol for when you are pairing your transmitter to your receiver. So if you get, let's say you buy this system and it's a one dog system and you get another dog and you decide I wanna buy another transmitter, you're gonna to have to pair the second transmitter uh, or the second receiver to your transmitter and there's a pairing symbol on there so you know when your unit is pairing. And then there's a, uh, a lost transmitter symbol that's on this. Now I'm going to talk about how to program the four different buttons on your transmitter. There's two ways to do that. You can program it right from here using your transmitter or you can connect this to your computer using the USB model, and we'll talk about that in a minute, and program them that way. Now I wanna put uh, a caveat in here about when you first start to learn the programming. It confused me when I start. If you look at your manual, your manual is gonna say, push your program button until you see PR. Well, I looked at that baby and I said, that's not a PR, that's a PA. That's a misprint in the manual. <laughs> Guess what? It, it really wasn't. It was a misread on my eyes. So throughout this uh, little training video, you're going to hear me say PA, PR, PA, PR. Same thing, just a matter of how my pea brain works when I'm looking at it. But that's one of the caveats. The other is there will be times when you're going through programming certain functions you're gonna push, push the uh, S1 button and it's gonna look like 51. You'll push the S2 button and in the programming phase, uh, it could look like 52. Or the S3 can look like 53, when in fact they're S1, S2, and S3. I just say that so you're probably a lot smarter than me and you'll figure it out quicker than I did, but it's there. I put it out there, so when you see me say 51, I mean, <laughs> I mean S1. And when I say PA, I mean PR. So now we're gonna talk about how to program the, the four buttons on the collar to whether you want them to be uh, momentary, continuous, uh, momentary uh, boost, continuous boost, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's a simple thing to do once you understand it. To start it, push your program button until you see a PA on the dial. That puts it in the programming mode. We're gonna program the S1 button to be continuous. So we're gonna get it in the programming mode by pushing the programming button until we see PA. All my buttons are flashing now. Now I'm gonna push S1, and I push it until it rotates through all the various options to continuous. So I see the C there. 
Then I push the program button again, and that's all it is to it. One more time. So now when I push S1, I can see I'm on, the C shows. That means it's continuous. Very simple. One more time. I'll program S2 to be continuous boost. Remember, continuous boost is C+. Plus. Get it in the program mode. All the lights are flashing. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to push the S2 button until I see plus, until I see C+. Plus. There's C, C+, plus. there it is. I push the program button again and that's how quickly I programmed it. So in this chapter we're going to talk about the boost feature. It is a simple feature once you understand it, but it can be confusing for first time dog owners. So I'm going to break it into four different segments. The first part is going to be, I'm going to explain what the boost is, exactly what the boost is. Then I'm going to talk about what stimulation features can have a boost associated with it. Then I'm going to talk about how to change the factory preset to whatever level you want. And finally, I'm going to talk about how to program one of the four buttons to be the boost. So we're going to start with what is a boost. The factory preset on a boost is five levels of stimulation. That means that whatever I'm working at at the moment, if I push the boost button, the five levels of stimulation is going to be instantly added to it. So if I'm working on a level 20 with this dog and I push a boost button, the dog's going to get 25 levels of stimulation. If I've changed the programming for the boost to be 20, and the working level on this dog is 20, and I push the boost button, the dog's going to get 40 levels of stimulation. So basically, preset is five levels of stimulation. The dog trainer can change the boost to whatever they want. If they want to add it and change, it, uh, change the boost to 10, 15, 20, 3, it makes no difference, but you can change the boost to what you want. Now, let's talk about the features that can have a boost because not all stimulation features can have a boost. There's four stimulation uh, features on the collar. Momentary can have a boost, continuous can have a boost, ramp can have a boost, instant cannot have a boost. So you've got momentary, continuous, and ramp. Now I'm gonna talk about how to change the boost level, and when you change it, it's the same for all three levels of stimulation. Once you put a boost in here, it's the same for momentary, continuous, and ramp. You can't have momentary have five, continuous have 10, ramp have 15. Let's talk about how we're gonna change that now. The first thing I'm gonna do is turn the collar on. So I push the on and off button, it's on. Then I put it in the programming phase. I hold the P down, until the outer ring is flashing at me. That tells me I'm in the programming phase. Now I want to put it into the boost programming phase. To do that, I just press the on off button one time. As soon as I do that, the blinking around the outside of the dial stops and what I'm faced with is a plus feature. And the plus is boost. So what I see on the dial when I'm in the programming phase for boost is a plus, a blinking one, which tells me I'm in the one collar, and it has to be blinking. So now I'm going to change it to 10 levels of stimulation. I adjust my dial to show 10. I push the S1 button, and then I take and push the P button or the programming button to get out of it. So what I would recommend is play with your uh, transmitter, program the S1, the S2 to be momentary until you have your, your mind wrapped around how to change the programming, how to change the, the boost feature. Remember, you got to put it in the programming phase, hit the on and off button one time until you see the plus and all the other blinking lights are gone, adjust your dial, push S1 to lock it in, and leave the programming phase by pushing P. That's as quick as it is. I'm gonna first cover how to fit the collar on your dog. I'm gonna cover how to determine the working level for your dog, and it's different for every single dog. I'm gonna talk about the ramp feature. 
I'm going to talk about the instant stimulation feature. I'm going to talk about the light. I'm going to explain how to program them. I'm going to explain how to lock your collar so you would ha always have it in the same mode. Uh, I'm going to explain how to program the lost transmitter feature. I'm going to explain how to program your collar by using your computer. In the first video, I'm going to explain how to change the programming by yourself just using the transmitter. You can also program it using your computer. It comes with a USB stick that has the program, the educator program on it. So I'll explain that. And then finally, you have to use the computer programming to change the types of tone and the types of vibration that come with this collar. So I'm going to take a second here to talk about how to fit, if you're new to remote collar training, how to fit the collar on your dog. Assuming you have the right contact points, and I bred German Shepherds for 35 years for police service work, competition, obedience, uh, biting dog sports. It's important to have the right contact points for your dog. If you have a long-haired dog, put the longer contact points on there. But how you put it on your dog is extremely important. And people that are new to dog training and new to use, using uh, these collars, 99% of the time they don't put them on correctly. They put them on too loose, so they're just, they think it's on tight enough and it's just hanging down like that. Well, I can tell you that you can look at this right there. There's not a lot of room here, but you know what? Neither one of these contact points are on my neck. But if you look here on the side, I'm telling you, it's tight. Contact points aren't even touching me. So the way you've got to do it is you put the collar right up underneath the jaw of your dog and you have the strap come right behind the ears and you pull it on tight. I mean, it's tight. Now that I can feel the prongs, but if you feel a remote collar that's on a dog correctly you, and you're not familiar with this, you're going to think, holy geez, that's way too tight. Try it on yourself though. I mean, you just saw me when I thought, the average person would think, okay, that's pretty tight. You know what? I'm not going to get any stimulation. Where it is right now, I got a full finger in between the end of one of those probes. Before, I had two fingers. That's on pretty tight there. Neither one of those probes are touching my neck. If you are training with a remote collar or in, I call them invisible leashes, it's got to work. And the only way it's going to work is if you put this collar on correctly and if you keep your units charged. So learn how to put it on tight. Learn. It's got to be tight. So it's, I'm not choking there, but both of them are touching me. And if you'd walk up and pull on this, and you'd say, wow, that's really tight. Well, you know what? Put it on yourself. It's not that tight. Now, I will say this. One of the things, and I forgot, I forgot when we figured this out. 10 years ago, I don't know, a long time ago, we figured out that we could take two transmitters and put it on one collar, and we didn't have to put the collar on as tight as we would if we just had one transmitter on. What we found out was we could put a collar on and it could be looser, and at least depending upon which way the dog was leaning, one set of those contact points would be touching the dog's neck. A lot of people that don't understand dog training at all think, holy geez, you're doing that? So you can shock the snot out of that dog twice as hard as you would normally. Those people are misguided. That's the word I was looking for. I had a few other words too. But there's a lot to be said about having two transmitters on the same collar. You just don't have to have it on tight. They can lean one way and it'll get it this way. They can lean the other way and it gets this way. We sell a lot of, lot of collars where customers order two of these and they pair them so they're both getting it. 
And one last thing, if you're new to the collar business or to the collar training and your dog, your dog's neck is like this, there's no reason to have the rest of that there. Just cut it off. Figure out where it is on your dog. Go past your little, little uh, latches there. Go past there and then cut that much of it off. It doesn't make sense to have it all flapping around like that. Now we're going to talk about how to set different levels. If you're new to dog training, you have to figure out what the working level is of your dog. That means you put the collar on and we want to know at what level a dog starts to feel something from the transmitter. So we'll put the collar on and let the dog be free in the room and we'll stimulate them at level one and look and see if there's any reaction and we'll move it up to level two, we'll move it up to level three and what we look for is for sure we don't want a dog that has a verbal uh, yelp or jump. We're looking for the moment when that dog feels something and it's different with every dog. Some dogs will kind of their eye will twitch a little bit, their head will just look around like, what, what was that? Or they'll, they'll look at the ground like, what was that? Did I just step on something? We don't, we prefer not to have a startle response where the dog goes, ah! They did that pretty good. Anyway, I would say that if you get a startle response, uh, most of the time, you went too high. There's going to be an occasional dog that's a little touchy that, that may yelp at nothing, but you're looking at the least amount of stimulation to be kind of like tapping the dog on the shoulder saying, hey, pay attention to me. Hey, pay attention to me. Quit looking at over there. Come on, pay attention. That's what we're looking for. We're not looking for punishment in the dog from my standpoint. My standpoint is the purpose, and I say it a million times, the purpose of a correction is not to punish a dog. The purpose of a correction is to get a behavior change. We want a behavior change in the dog. We want them to stop focusing on this other dog, uh, focusing on a tennis ball when we are calling them to us, you know, and the level of corrections are going to increase based on how strong the distraction is that our dog goes, is faced with. For example, if you have a dog that's dog aggressive and this dog is seeing a dog that's a half a block down the street and he's starting to focus on him, obviously you're not going to get a behavior change by, hey, don't look at that dog. You're going to have to go higher than that. So no one can tell you what level you should start your dog at. You have to figure out what level the dog needs to be at based on the level of distraction that's in front of your dog. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to talk about the ramp feature. Basically the first thing you got to do is you've got to program one button for the ramp and another button for the ramp boost. So First, I'm going to get you to it. Hit the program button, tell the PA shows. Hit the S3 until it goes around the circle. C, C plus, there it is. The R for ramp, I'm going to lock that in by pushing the program button. S3 is now programmed to the R. Now I'm going to program the S4, the red button, to the ramp boost. Put it in the program mode. Push it until I see PA. The outer, uh, the outer ring is flashing. What do you want? What do you want? Okay, I'll show you what I want. I push S4 until it comes around to the R plus, R boost. M, M boost, C for continuous, C plus continuous boost. There's R. R plus is ramp boost and I'm going to lock that in place now by pushing the program. So now we have 
S3, the top button for ramp. S4 for R plus, ramp boost. Now let's talk about how it works. Let's say that we have determined that my dog has a working level of 20. So I'm going to turn the dial and get it on 20. So there, I got the dial to 20. When I touch the ramp, it's going to take one second to go from zero to 20, because 20 is what I have as a working level. It's what I have on the dial. So I push it. It goes from zero to 20 in one second. What's the boost? The boost is going to depend upon what you programmed your boost to be for this unit. Remember, we had set the boost earlier to whatever your dog needs. Once you determine a boost level, be it coming from the factory set at five, if you feel your dog or you want to have a boost of 10, you program the boost to 10 or to 20. Once you've set a boost level for a transmitter, it's the same boost for momentary, it's the same boost for continuous, and it's the same boost for ramp. So, if I have a working level of 20 for my dog, and I've got it dialed to 20, and I hit boost, ramp boost, it's going to take two seconds to go from zero to the 20 plus the boost. So it's going to go two seconds from zero to 40. So I hold it down, and it goes two seconds, and it gets up to 40. Because, how did I get 20 again? 20 is the working level of my dog, and the boost level that I had pre-programmed was 20. So 20 and 20, it goes to 40 in two seconds. I'm going to say it again. I see no purpose for the ramp setting. If you use a remote caller, timing is critical. So if you use a ramp, your timing is off by a second. If you use the ramp plus, timing is off by two seconds. It makes no sense in the world to use a ramp setting. I'm not sure why Greg has that on there, because as far as I'm concerned, it's bad dog training. Don't use it. That's all I gotta say. Uh, programming a button to the instantaneous mode. Uh, we start by turning your dial. It has to be on zero, zero to make this program mode. I'm going to program S3, the one in the front, to instantaneous. So the first thing I do, make sure that my dial says zero, zero. There's no stimulation called for. I'm going to put it in the program mode. So what do I do? I push the P on the side, hold it down until I get a PA showing. showing. Then I'm going to push the S3, because that's, that's the button I want to program, until I see that it's on the I. So there's the I. I've got it on I. It says S3. It looks like 53, but it's S3. I'm going to lock it in by pushing the program button again. So I just programmed S3 to be the instantaneous. In this segment, I'm going to talk about how the instant um, feature works on the Educator Pro 900 because it's different. If you're going to use or program one of the buttons to be the instant button, you have to start with the stimulation level at zero, zero. If you have your stimulation level set to two, it's not going to work. The way the instant works is you set it to zero, zero. If I have programmed one of the buttons, and for this I'll say the S4 or the red button. If I program the red button to be the instant feature, I push it when it's zero, zero, and that starts a 45 second clock. So it'll sit there and not do anything for 45 seconds or until I turn the dial and start to do stimulation. And as I do stimulation up, 
down, up, down, it will stimulate for 45 seconds and then it'll turn itself off. If you want to turn it off before the 45 seconds, there's two things you can do. You can push the button again that you have programmed, that stops it. Or you can rotate the button back to zero. That stops the, the stimulation, but it starts the 45 second clock going again. You got me? So we started at zero, zero for 45 seconds. I rotate the dial up, that starts a different 45 second clock. So you can go up and down, up and down, up and down, back to zero, zero. 45 second clock starts again. So you get 45 seconds to do whatever you want and then start rotating it again. Up, another 45 second clock goes. When you're all done, you can either go back to zero, zero, wait 45, start it again, or in the end, to turn the whole thing off, you push your programmed button and that gets you out of the instant mode. But again, this is not a feature that a new dog trainer should use because you have too many things going on in your mind at one time to remember that once you start that instant continuation, that dog's gonna get stimulated for 45 seconds if you don't turn it off. So that's the way it works. It's an important thing for anybody that owns a pro educator and wants to use the instant feature to know and understand completely. So I'm gonna talk about the light feature here. Uh, there's a caveat that goes along with the light feature and that is you have a limited amount of battery time in your transmitter, so use your light sparingly. It's not a flashlight to be left on all the time. You'll find that out and the worst part about it is if you're out there and your dog is off leash and you need the remote to do your recalls and you've used all your battery power on a light, you have a dog with no invisible leash. So with that said, I'll explain how to do it. First of all, obviously, both your transmitter uh, and your receiver need to be turned on. Put your transmitter in the program mode until you see PA or PR, whichever way you want to read it. Then push your on and off button two times. Just tap it on to it's on. Now push one of the S1 through the S4 buttons. Any one will work. I'll push S1. That turns the light on to the blinking mode. You can see it blink. If I push S1 another time, it'll make it go on continuous, so it's on all the time. If you want to turn it off, you push the S1 button one more time, and the light goes off. You can get out of the light mode by simply pushing the P button one more time. Now, if I press S1, I just get the stimulation, whatever it was programmed for before. So I'm gonna do it one more time just to repeat myself. Push the program button until you see PA or PR. Once it's flashing, push your on and off button twice. Once, twice. Now it's in the light programming mode. Push S1 or S2 or S3 or S4, it makes no difference. Push it one time. Now your light is on and it's blinking. Push it one more time and it's gonna stay on. I hope. <laughs> it does. Push it one more time and it's gonna go off. Push the P button, you're out of the mode. Now your S1 flips back to whatever you had it programmed to before. So again, use it sparingly. If your dog is running around in a big park off leash and you're not 100% sure where he is, you know, go ahead. It doesn't take that long to turn it to PA, on, off, twice. There he is. I see where he is. So I turn it off, press the P1 or the program button once, I'm out of it. So you can do it rather quickly, but again, remember, you don't have a lot of battery program here. Some people are worried that they are going to accidentally roll that thing up 
to 50 on a dog that only needs a 10 working level. Those people can lock this transmitter at 10 and it's not that hard to do. So we're going to do that. First thing I'm going to do is get it to 10. Then I'm going to get it in the programming mode over here. Keep in mind when you lock when you lock your system at a 10, it's locked at a 10 for momentary and it's locked at a 10 for continuous. So you have to program one of the buttons that's momentary or one of the buttons that's continuous to 10 and then lock it in. You do that by pushing the program button, wait till it gets to the PA and the outer ring is flashing saying, what do you want, what do you want? And then you say, I'll show you what I want and I'm going to push it until I get it to, to either a C or an M, continuous or momentary, and the one for the one dog is the tell here. If the one is solid, then it's locked. If the one is blinking, like it's blinking now, but I want to lock it at 10, I'm going to hold the, the button down until the blinking one doesn't blink anymore. That means I got it locked. And then I program that in. Now my one does not blink because I just locked it at 10. So I can turn the collar up to 69 and if I push the momentary or the continuous button, which is locked at 10, it's only going to stimulate at level 10. So you don't accidentally rotate it and stimulate your dog higher than what you want to have it stimulated. Frankly, I personally would not lock my collar in because I like to have the option of changing the stimulation levels. If I have a dog that I need, I feel I need to train with a remote collar for some reason, I don't want it locked. But it's a feature that's there for those people that do want to have it locked. So there's only one other thing that I should add to this and that is that we've locked uh, we've locked S1 here at 10, the working level on a dog. Keep in mind that if you have preset a boost to whatever, let's say you preset your boost to 10 and you have the S2 programmed to continue as boost, you can have it locked where S1 is going to give you a 10. Doesn't matter what you show on your dial, you push it and it's going to go sh and it's going to show 10. And if you've programmed S2 to be your continuous boost at 10 and you push S2, it's going to take your 10 boost and add it to the 10 that you've locked it at and your, your boost will then be 20. But it's going to be locked at 20. So it won't matter. Once this unit is locked in at your working level, your continuous and your momentary will be at 10. And if you've pre-programmed your boost to be 10 and your S2 is continuous boost, you hit that, the dog's going to get 2 or 20, I'm sorry. And if you've pre-programmed your S4 to be momentary boost, it's going to get a boost of 20. You're locked in 10 plus your boost. Okay, we'll move on. You also have the opportunity to have a lost transmitter signal on here. What the lost transmitter signal simply means is if you haven't touched this thing in six hours, it'll start to beep. So hopefully, if you use the charging system that I use and that Cindy uses and that we recommend, which means it's either on the dog or it's plugged in at your feeding station or in your change room or your training room, wherever, you'll never have to use it. But if you do, it's a good feature to have. So. After six hours, if it hasn't been used, it'll beep for you. Of course, uh, there's another side to that too. That means if uh, you're out in your field, in your training field someplace, and you lose this baby, uh, you gotta wait for six hours to come back and then wander around and have a lot better ears than I have to hear this beeping. So now we're gonna talk about how to program our transmitter for the lost transmitter mode. How do you do it? Simple. Just like everything else, uh, push your program button until you get PA. 
It's all flashing. What do I do? What do I do? Push the on and off three times. One, two, three. Then it's off. Now that's interesting because I see over here a transmitter. There's a little transmitter, but a picture of a transmitter with some stuff around it. So to turn it on, I push one of the L1, uh, S1 buttons and I hear the little song and it's on. So now I see the transmitter on the right hand side and the on there. Now here's the caveat to the whole thing. You have to know when you're going to lose your transmitter to have this thing work. So <laughs> I think everybody knows when they're going to lose their car keys. Everybody's got to know when they're going to lose their transmitter so you can program it to let you know that, hey, you lost me and I'm over here. Okay, now we're going to talk about how to use the little USB uh, to program your receiver. Personally, I think it's easier now that I understand how to program this, and I hope you feel the same way, that it's easier to program 90% of the things that you want to program by just using uh, the receiver and the buttons. But there are some things there are some features that cannot be programmed unless you use the USB. And those are your tone settings. It comes pre-programmed with one tone level. It comes pre-programmed with one vibration level, but there's different levels. And those can only be changed by using the USB in your computer. So if that's important to you, then you're going to have to use the USB. And basically, all you do is plug it in to the slot on your computer, and then you take your, com your cords, your USB cord, and you plug it into the USB setting on your computer. like that, and you plug it in on your other, and now we're going to go ahead and talk about how this all works. When you open up the computer program, this is what you're going to see when you start. You're going to have the default settings if you do not have your transmitter connected. If you have your transmitter connected to your computer, which I don't, this little button here would be highlighted, and if I had changed any of the programming on my transmitter, it would be reflected here. But this is set for the default. So if you ever want to set your transmitter back to the default, you just click the default button. That's exactly what everything is set at. The default for the boost is 5. Default for the maximum level is 100. The vibration is set at the TS H, I'll talk about that in a minute. Tone is medium. The instant mode is normal. So now, let's say we go and we change some of these. In the computer program, when we're done, all we have to do is go over here and hit save, and that's going to change and save everything that we've made changes to here. It'll change it and save it to your transmitter. So that's important to know in the beginning. Now, Let's back up and look at some of the things that you can do here. If you want to change your boost with the computer program, you can do it right here. Pretty simple. I'm not going to spend any time talking. Default boost is, uh, is 10. If you would want to lower your maximum level, you can. The most you can get out of it is 100. When it comes to the vibration and the tone, the only way that you can change, reprogram your transmitter to a different vibration or a different tone, and again, that's the vibration default is the S1, this button on the side. The default from the factory tone is the S2, this button on the side. 
And again, if you want to change any of them to whatever you want, it's as simple as that. But I'm going to put it back to tone. So there's the default. You come over here. Well, let's talk about vibration. Come over here to the vibration settings, and you've got another a number of options here. You've got high, medium, and low. What this means is the vibration is a steady, high level of vibration. And I'm not going to try and describe what that is. You'll have to just program your own transmitter and feel it and see if you can what you think about it. The difference is the TS high is more of, they call it a tamping sensation. It's like a pulse, whereas this is a steady vibration. It sounds like zzz. this level in a vibration would be zzz, 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 zzz. and this medium and low are just different speed settings for the zzz, 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 zzz. this is low. Now this is interesting. The TA means a vibration with a working level of stimulation. So if you have your dial set to 20 and you program your button to be, you program your tone button to be TA, they're going to get a vibration and a working level of stimulation at the same time. And it's a similar thing with the tone over here. You have high, medium, low, that's loud, medium, not so loud. PA is a similar thing. It means you have a tone along with a working level of tone. And the working level is going to be what you show on your dial at the time that you're using it. So you can set your PA and your tone here when you hit it is going to be a tone and a stimulation at the same time. So I'll set mine to high. The instant mode is also a little different. Here you have your normal instant mode that we talked about in the programming when you program using your transmitter. I'm not going to repeat that here. The difference for the limited or the limit is you get an instant stimulation with a maximum level of 40. Now maybe Greg would have been better advised to use for the PETA folks out there and rather than an instant shock might have been a better idea to use instant stimulation but water over the dam what can I say so that's what we have now I'll leave that just one more time though that the limited means that you have an instant stimulation with a maximum level of 40. It means instantly you get stimulation. You can rotate the dial all the way up, and the most you're going to get is 40 levels out of it. So for those people that do use the instant stimulation, and I believe I already mentioned, I recommend that only for professional dog trainers or until you really get some training and how to train with that. I'm not going to talk about it here. So with that said, you can come over here and change any one of the four programmable buttons, one, two, three, four, to anything you want. So you've got your drop down here. Your only option on this one is momentary boost, M+. There is no M option, and that's because the S3 button, this one, is already programmed to M, so you're only going to be able to, you can't have two buttons programmed to M or momentary. You could program it to continuous, continuous boost. <laughs> Greg, knock off that shock stuff. <laughs> it's a little goofy. Should have said continuous boost stimulation. Ramp, shock. No, Greg. Ramp, stimulation. Ramp boost stimulation, instant vibration, tone. You can actually set it to nothing if you want. In this case here, I might probably set it to momentary, momentary boost. If you want to come over here, you could set this to continuous, continuous boost. There you go. You got it right there. 
And then if we had our collar plugged in, you go over here to hit save right here. And everything that we've made here is then going to save to our transmitter. So it's a pretty interesting thing, but I'm going to say this one more time. I'm not a network administrator. Getting this program to work could be impossible for you because it depends on the security system that you have on the computer you're going to plug this into. Now, I'm using this on an Apple. I don't have the current, I believe the current, at this point in time, the current operating system is level 10. I never installed that. So I was able to open this computer program, but as I understand it, it can't open on the current system. So you may have to go to the Microsoft Windows uh, computer to, to program it, or, you know, Windows is so goofy, they just did their upgrades, and they upgraded at night without asking, and Windows 10 is a terrible, terrible product. And you might not be able to even do it there. So all I'm saying is that this is an interesting program. It's a quick way to program a lot of features if you can get it to work on a program, on a computer. But if you can't, don't call me. Call Greg down at uh, Educator, and he'll have to figure out what he's going to do it. But the operating systems change so often, it's almost an impossible thing to do. It's a great idea, but still uh, a hard thing to keep organized. So with that said, I'm going to close out of this. That's how, you, that's how you use your computer and the USB cable to program your transmitter. It's as simple as that. And again, personally, I'd, pre I'd prefer to do most of the programming myself because it's so simple to do yourself once you understand this. But like I said, if you want different levels of vibration, different levels of tone, you're going to have to learn how to run the USB on your computer. This transmitter can handle three collars. When you buy it, if you buy it as a single dog model, uh, it only comes with one receiver. If you want to expand to two dogs, you buy another receiver. Three dogs, you would buy a third receiver. So when that happens, you need to pair the new receiver to go with your transmitter. I'm going to explain how to do that. It is not a simple process to do. Once you understand it, it's not a difficult process to do. So I'll walk you through it, and then we can go from there. The, the goofy thing about this is the way that it was laid out from the factory. As we go through the programming, and I'll explain that later, you're going to get to a point where you have to push one of the four programmable buttons on the unit to the collar that you want to pair. So if you're new to the collar, the two on the side are S1, S2. The two on the front are S3, S4. So if you want to pair the S1 collar, let's say your dog chews this up, you lose it, whatever, you get another collar in the, mark, in the, in the mail, you buy one. You got to pair the new one to be the S1 or the, the, one, the dog one collar. When you go through the process, you push the S1 button to program it. I'll explain in a minute how to get to that. But then you buy a second collar, second receiver. You have to, pair, you have to program that or pair it. When you do that, you have, to, you have to push the S4 button to pair it. Here's the goofy thing. If you buy a third receiver for a third dog, in the programming process, you have to press the S2. So you've got S1, S4, which is the second collar, or S2, which is the third collar. I'm sorry, where's the common sense here? I miss it but it's goofy enough that you'll probably remember it. When this is set up for two dogs, you'll know that it's set up for two dogs because you're gonna have 
a one and a two flashing just above your stimulation level. If it's set up for a three dog, you're gonna have a one, two, and three flashing right above your stimulation, stimulation level. Simple to get to, I explained it in a previous video. You just hold down the on and off and you press the on and off and the S1 button at the same time. And it, it had been set up for three. I did that, it got one beep. Now it's set up for just one collar. I'll set it up for two. Hold down the on and off. Two beeps. I got a one and a two flashing on the dial. Now it's set up for two dogs. If I wanted to have it for three dogs, hold down the on and off and press S1, and it'll, be, it'll do three beeps. You can listen to it, I'll hold it next to the mic. I got a one, two, and three flashing above my stimulation level. So let's back off. That's how you do three. I'm gonna put it on a two dog mode. So I'm gonna hold down the on and off, push it once, it beeps once, one dog's flashing. I got it set for one, uh, one, tra or one receiver. Hold down the on and off, push it again, S1 again. Two beeps, now, now we're running on that. Two receivers, one transmitter. When you have it with the one and the two showing, the buttons and the function on these buttons totally changes and your ability to program them changes. When it's on the one and the two dog, the S1 button, the top one on the side, is dog one. The top one on the front is dog one. The bottom one on the side can be programmed to the functions or features that you want for dog two. And then the, or the red one on the front, the S4 button, is dog two. So you can program them, and we covered programming in my earlier programming streaming videos, but you can program them to the features that you want. You just have to remember, top side, top front, dog one. Bottom on the side, bottom on the front, dog two. Simple, that's not that hard. So, let's add another collar though. That's when it gets a little dicey. Not dicey, but you know, it's not an easy collar. So now, the first thing we want to do is to set it up for three dogs. So I'm going to hold down the on and off and press S1 at the same time. I'll put it near my neck so you can hear it beep three times. I look, I got three, one, two, and three flashing. The transmitter is now set to work with three dogs, okay? But on the three dog mode, your buttons all change again. And what are they? Well, even I have to think a little bit. It's still the same for the first dog. The top one on the side and the top one on the front are dog one, okay? So you can program them to any of the features that you wanna have programmed. And again, that's in the other streaming videos or this would go on forever and ever. Bore the devil out of you. But, when I look at the three dog mode, the front button, the S4 button, is now the only button that can be used to program for dog two. Dog three is the S2 button. Wouldn't you have thought, wouldn't you have thought that they would have made the S2 button for the second dog? I don't get it. It is what it is. The second dog is the red S4. Third dog is the S2 button. There's only one button for the second and third dog, and there's a caveat. <laughs> With the educator, there always is. The caveat is this. If you program this one, S4, or the two dog, that's the two dog, or the the three dog, which is S2, if you program those buttons to momentary or continuous, you can have actually, <laughs> this is a little goofy, you can actually have 
a momentary or continuous, and a momentary or continuous boost. So if you're, say, on the second dog, you have this programmed, the red button programmed to continuous, I can hit the continuous. It's now, pro it, it was programmed to vibrate. It's talking to me. Let me turn it off. Back to this boost, two button boost feature. You can only do this in the three dog mode. You can push, if it's programmed to momentary or continuous, we'll say it's programmed to continuous. You can push this button for the second dog. And if you push the button above it, the button above it becomes the boost button. Same thing on the side. If you program the, the third dog to have momentary or continuous, you can press it, push the button above it, and that'll be the boost button for what you have programmed there. So you can have momentary boost if you program this to momentary. If you program that button to be continuous, you can have continuous and boost that way. Complicated? Yeah. A lot to learn? Yeah. Can you get that out of the manual? Not in your lifetime. This is the crummiest manual ever put on any product anywhere. I'm sorry, it sucks. I didn't learn this by myself. I had to call a factory that I had to play with for a long time before I got it. So I would recommend that, again, if you're gonna be a professional dog trainer that wants to learn how to use this thing, figure out how to program it. So in this segment, we're gonna talk about the vibration and tone mode. When the unit comes from the factory, it's preset to have a factory default for the level of vibration or the level of tone that is on the collar. But there are different levels of vibration and tone. To change them, you can't program it by just using your transmitter. You have to connect it to the computer and change it that way. I will tell you that the computer program that Educator has put out was done a year and a half from now, and whenever you watch this, it'll be further, and it doesn't work with all operating systems. So it's either going to work or it's not going to work. To me, that's a problem with Educator. Uh, they can say it's a problem with, with uh, operating systems. I think if you're going to have a feature on your product that can't be changed unless it's connected to a computer, then you better make sure that your programming works. But anyway, let's assume that it does work so you understand how to do this. You plug it into your computer and you have different options for different levels of stimulation. One of the levels is to have either a vibration or a tone. You can't have them both on the same button. So either vibration or a tone associated with stimulation. You can set it so that if you program this on the computer to be vibration stimulation, you will get one and a quarter seconds of vibration, and then it will switch to 30 seconds of stimulation. And that stimulation level will be set according to what you dial it up to on your dial. So it can be what you want. Same thing with the tone. You can program this on your computer to be a tone stimulation button. And the same thing, you use it, it, it will give a tone for one and a half seconds, and then it switches to stimulation at whatever level is on the dial for 30 seconds. So it's your choice. If you plug it in, if it works on your, uh, on your computer, you're gonna be able to change the different levels of vibration, and the one of them will be vibration and stimulation. You'll be able to change one of the buttons to tone, and that'll be different levels of tone, and one of them will be tone and stimulation. But you can't have tone and vibration on the same button, just so you know that. I think that covers it. If you're new to remote collar dog training, I recommend that you learn how to train with a remote collar correctly. Learberg has done a number of DVDs and streams and courses on remote collar training. I tell people that 
The remote collar is the greatest tool that's ever been invented for dog training when it's used with low level stimulation. It's also the most abused tool that's ever been invented for dog training. That's why <laughs> you see all these animal rights people out there bad mouth in the use of a remote collar when if they had learned how to train with it correctly and had done low level stimulation, they would very quickly learn that the vast majority of the times that a good dog trainer uses a remote collar is at low levels, levels that a human can't even feel. The use of a remote collar when it's done correctly is like tapping your dog on the shoulder and saying, hey, come on, pay attention to me. Just do what I want you to do. It doesn't have to be shock the dog. It's not hurt the dog. It's, hey, come on, pay attention to me.